All right, just pulling up to this thing right now. Yikes. It looks worse than it did on that day I saw it. Maybe I was in a good mood, I don't know. You know, when you do jobs like this, you do it for the customer who wants it done. You know, many times customers, in this case, this particular customer really understood the value of his factory paint and finish. The clear coat on this vehicle is as strong as a cell phone cover. The paint, it's not sprayed on. It's applied by electrostatic. So it's literally like a piece of plastic over the metal, cooked on it and it's irreplaceable. The traditional auto body shop has to replace this piece entirely. And then when it's painted again, the paint is not electrostatically applied. The clear coat is not cooked on the panel at a high temperature. It's sprayed on and it's cured. Does not get to the hardness level as factory clear coat can. And that's why the paint doesn't crack when it's impacted and moved around and, and bent in this way. That's so, what's so amazing about factory paint. That's why you want to keep it. My experience with dents like this is that it's displacement. It's not a stretch. The metal basically kind of moved up a little bit and it's kind of frozen right there. The panels these days are very strong and that could recover as long as you're able to apply the right pressure in both directions to kind of bring it out, give it strength again. So I put my strap around the tire in order to keep the plastic wheel liner out so I can get tools up inside there and start my work. Because essentially all we need most of the time is pressure behind the damage and that's super important. Here I'm showing in this Tesla right front fender that there's, there's no dangerous wires in the way. It's just simple 12 volt system um, that you're normally working around and it's wide open. That's what's great. These cars are fantastic for access and the paint is amazing. So there it is. I'm ready to get started. That's how quick PDR can begin. Now the beginning of this dent, as I look around, I remembered in the estimate that there was an opening at the top here. So I double checked and sure enough, there's a hinge there that I can pry off of and get some strength really close to that real heart of the dent. And that's important for accuracy. For this job, I brought along some history from my past doing dents. Years ago, I bent a truck leaf spring and drilled some holes in it, threaded it. And that was my first tool for pushing out big dents on fenders. I thought I might need it, and it turns out it's uh, the reason why I abandoned it is because it didn't have all the angles I needed. That's important, but it's still possible to fix dents with any type of tooling you can come up with. It's just a little more cumbersome than you'd like. You're always searching for the best tools, and that's what I eventually did. I couldn't find it, and I made my own, and that's when I came up with the dent dial, mainly for jobs like this that you need a lot of power but yet you need the adjustment to get through the openings in this case i had my 35 heavy all set up to leverage off the tire and with one hand and sometimes my body i just sit on it and really push it out now it takes a lot of power to move this back out but once i rebuild the line it should hold up really well Now I'm always checking for heat on the panel. I want to always keep it hot. So I heated it back up again, continue pushing. You know, and, and here I'm just trying to 
apply the right pressure behind that low spot. You can see it right there. I'm behind it now. And then I basically kind of sit on it. And that keeps it just firm enough to where when I tap down that top wave or that really tight crown, it's going to slowly draw it out, but not let it collapse the other way. That's what you would not want it to collapse the other way. That would stretch it and ruin this. You got kind of one shot at bringing out something like this and you really have to be accurate. You might be noticing that I'm not using a light or any type of um, special reflection. I'm literally just looking into the dent because I'm a student of natural reflection and I can tell exactly where I'm at by the way the reflection is pinching and drawing to a center. It takes many years to understand natural reflection, but I'm finding it to be the most accurate, especially in a situation like this. Because I have used fog boards and great lighting from these special lights you can buy, and they're awesome, and there's many situations to use them. In this particular one, what happens is if you set up the lighting just right, what you're trying to do is see where your push is in the center of a low spot like that. If you push hard enough, yes, in great lighting, you can see your, your push move a little bit in there. And then you know um, that you're in the middle. That's the idea. You're trying to find get that accuracy, get your lighting all set up. The problem is if you're pushing hard enough to see your actual you know, tool tip come up, that's actually too hard and you'll snap this back the other way. It has to be more subtle than that. And that's where the reflection is telling me exactly what's going on. And I didn't have to see a push come up in the center, just have to trust the natural reflection and get away from these special lights because I used to use them and they're great and they're tempting to use, but they kind of inhibit your skills when you're truly, truly trying to get it to the very end and get it, you know, as, as perfect as you can reading just the reflection, because that's what the customer is going to be looking at when you pull the special lights and boards away. And it's right about here. I got that feeling that if I pushed hard enough, this is going to just snap back the other way. And this job is ruined. But that's the risk you take when you take on these big jobs, is that there could be that moment. So far, 29 years, I haven't had that happen yet. Now I'm pushing quite a bit because I'm very accurate with my pushes reading reflection. Now I could also have gotten lots of glue tabs up inside that big low spot and just pulled it. The issue with that is that it does not pinpoint the pull right in the spot you need it. And that's where I'm pushing right now. The idea is once that body line gets shifted and that crown goes down, that, that low spot comes out and there's some strength in that body line, it has memory and it literally wants to come back to its original position. Another thing may be saying, how come you're not knocking down the crowns first? It's a good question. The reason why I don't knock down the crowns first is because they're literally fighting something else and you'll beat up a crown only later on seeing that you'll have to now fix all those tap downs when you really didn't have to. My main focus is that body line because it's so strong it dominates the entire panel. Therefore, if I straighten it out first, it literally is going to fix lots of stuff around it and then you knock down the crowns because the low spots will rise up, the crowns will go down, everything will balance out. Well, at least that's my theory when going after this one. And this is for some of you that have been asking, why don't you show the whole repair? <laughs> this is how long it could go, hours and hours and hours. And I'm just being patient 
with this body line. And that's where you got to be patient. You'll see at some point I'm showing the key areas of the repair that you just need to see. You don't see need to see in an eight hour video. All right, let's take a look after some pushing. You know, it always looks worse when you're just starting out. And yeah, I'm not perfect, I missed. This is probably where a lot of the pressure is, but it's okay. You know, the main thing is you're offsetting. You're not pushing all here and leaving that alone. You've got to tap that down. Now, after all of that, this was covered with the clear bra. I was kind of relieved because it looked a lot better when I took the clear bra off. I'm not going to take it all off. I decided I'll just leave it. You know, I just a little bit of glue there, but I'm just going to work on what I'm working on. And this is what it looks like under the clear. Way better. This is just glue right here. Uh, that looks great. So I'm real happy with the way it's working, working out, and uh, I'm just going to keep going. I knocked this one down, but I got a little too aggressive. But an inside round like that, it's really tough to knock down cleanly. You don't see it that often, but this is really good lighting to see damage because you can see where your pushes are. You're looking directly into it. And that's kind of what it looks like at the moment. You can see where I just want to keep staying up the middle here. And then I'm at the point now where as I push up, I'm making sure I knock down these crowns and just keep giving it metal, nothing sharp. That there looks manageable still, nothing super tight. That's what you want, nothing super tight. All round, roundness, but in the direction. Yes, this looks pretty mangled up and you just got to be familiar with with removing wrinkles, smoothing them out, and paintless dent repair. And this is really, really advanced. I don't expect you know many people to want to do this, but it's essentially having a, a strategy on how to work the wrinkles in a way where you can finally lay them down. If you're being taught this, where you're randomly pushing, randomly tapping, randomly pushing, spinning around, looking at it from this angle, this angle. Uh, another angle and just spinning around it. I don't recommend that. You, you won't come to a nice, um, even uh, reflection. 
that you can show and at least I'm going to try and show in 4k video. You know, this repair is coming out. Just got to get this all tightened up. But one of the toughest areas that you're going to work on any vehicle is when the metal is inside concave like that. The reflections can be backwards. I'm using uh, the reflections of the house I'm working next to and they're accurate, but it's tough. So if you put a light or a board up there, it's completely different and it throws you off. And that's what it takes, just hours and hours of fixing wrinkles. <laughs> but when you're a mobile service, you get to go out and see the sights while you're taking lunch. This is what I got to see. It's on my way to get some lunch. And this storm brought some nice big waves. Check it out. I mean, they're really rolling in. Look at that. Some good swells out there. Okay, back to work. You know, I showed um, some real detail in this video and this uh, scene right here in particular, because I want you to see the size of the lows and highs, nothing really sharp. If you're doing this type of work and you're coming up too sharp, it's, it's not really what I believe you should be doing on big smashes, but that's just my opinion, you know, and when you're seeing repairs like this, you know, don't accept pictures. You know, you can see where I'm not done and I, I took a picture to kind of show that you can kind of hide it a little bit, but I mean, remember what this looked like. Normally, uh, I, I would turn this down because it would be just something I couldn't fix, especially on black. And why this repair was more of an experiment for me. I wanted to see how well a Tesla fender can come back because of its paint is so amazing and so far I'm, I'm a believer when the fender came back out this gap became identical to the other side so that was great this is the side here I was kind of worried about and turns out that's the right uh, distance as well it seems the you know panels on Tesla's aren't completely straight and uh, it matched the other side just fine so now I'm done and uh, after this video, I did tackle a few more wrinkles, but check it out. Now, this is about as up close as you can get in 4K and not bad. I mean, I'm real happy with the repair. It's a real challenge. Um, customer was really happy and I still needed to slide hammer the very back of the fender right where the door is. But uh, that was it. Overall, great experience. Teslas are amazing. And uh, this car was saved from the auto body shop of replacing the panel and repainting the right front quadrant of this vehicle. That's the hood, the fender, and the door. So here's some pictures, you know, making it look as good as possible in pictures. Just it's easy, just take a picture. But video, that really shows you what's going on. So, you know, one of the harder dents I've done in a long time, but it was a great experience because uh, it proved the theory I had about Teslas and this amazing paint. And most cars are now being painted with the same process. Hope you learned something. Thanks for watching.